Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about using your airbrush effectively and having a great time doing it and saving a lot of time because airbrushes are awesome. And this is part 26, doing simple camouflage patterns on large vehicles such as tanks. Hey everyone, welcome back to Airbrush 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about airbrushing miniatures from start to finish, having a great time doing it. Gotta love your airbrush, it saves you a lot of time. And today we'll be doing a camo pattern, a simple camouflage pattern um, by airbrush. I know the last one used stencils, so people ask me what if we want to do one without stencils. You know, just a simple camo pattern using your airbrush. And so today we'll be doing that using a, so oh, I'll probably use a combination of SOTAR 2020 and my Patriot 105 because uh, SOTAR 2020 for the outlining of the pattern then probably filling it in using the other one. We'll see, depending on how I'm feeling. And uh, yeah, what we're using on a Bane Blade today. A Bane Blade is a huge vehicle, so it's a great idea to use an airbrush. It saves you a lot of time when painting large models like a Bane Blade. So as I said, and as always, put on gloves, put on a face mask, I will be doing so. I know I'm not wearing them now because I'm doing the intro. And uh, yeah, so the key is, when doing this, is to do a nice outline with the first color um, always start off with a lighter color when doing these kind of patterns. Lightest color, easy, it, it's much easier to go lighter to darker in these cases because the darker easily overlaps the lighter. Um, and for the lighter we'll be using Bane Blade Brown and then uh, bring a little bit more color to it by adding a little bit lighter to, and then you know, going the middle, going around the middle of it, so just highlight it up. So we'll be outlining the pattern first with the lighter color, filling in the lighter color, and then cleaning it up with the darker color if we don't like, you know, we just smoothing it out using the darker color and then fill in the darker color and then we're in good shape. We'll be using a two simple, uh, a, basically two colors, greens and browns, but we'll be highlighting them both up. So they'll take me four colors in this. So it's okay. So let's go ahead and start our camo pattern on our Bane Blade. So hey everyone, today we will be painting this Bane Blade. Woo, Bane Blade! Giant vehicle of awesomeness. So what I've done so far is I've pre-shaded it. So I've primed it all gray and then filled in the gaps, you know, just primed all the gaps with black primer. That way it's pre-shaded, we got some nice pre-shading going. Because we'll be using browns and greens today, especially the browns will really take advantage of this um, pre-shading. And even the greens will to some extent. So it's always great to pre-shade your vehicles. It just saves you a little time. This vehicle was originally painted red. So you can see a little bit of red, but it's not bad. It's, I've been able to go over it. So yeah, so today we'll start off with Bane Blade Brown. I'm gonna use some airbrush thinner medium to go over it and um, yeah, and then we'll get started. So the key is, as I said, first is outline the pattern with the airbrush and then fill it in. And then if you're not happy with it, clean it up using the darker color, basically. But anticipate the cleanups when you're doing the highlight color for the first color. Pretty straightforward stuff. And essentially we're just going in a bending pattern, you know, lumps and dum da 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 like this, you know, going up, around, da da da, cool pattern. Pretty straightforward. Simple camo pattern. So let's get started. And as I said, I'm using gloves, I'm putting on my face mask, and I'll be painting this using my SOTAR 2020 because it's a nice fine detail airbrush. You can do this with the Patriot 105, but you just won't get the nice fine detail. You just have to really, you know, turn down the PSI and really keep it close and pull it back. So with the, uh, with the, the uh, Patriot 105. So let's go ahead and start airbrushing. So I start off with Bane Blade Brown. And as I said, with my SOTAR 2020, which is a nice precision airbrush, I carefully made a pattern. Uh, it's not that too difficult of a pattern for camouflage. Essentially, it's just squiggly lines. But uh, it's just fluid lines, basically, and squiggly, you know, in a wavy fashion. Uh, some straight, some wiggly. That's basically camo to a nutshell. Or at least a simple camouflage pattern that I'm showing today. And so with each one, I started off by doing the outline of it. And if I was happy with it, then I would fill it in using my SOTAR 2020. I decided just to go pure SOTAR 2020 because uh, you just increase, you know, you pull it back a little farther and uh, it does a good job. You know, it, it takes a little bit longer when doing a large model like this with your airbrush than a, as opposed to a, a Patriot 105, but it's okay. That way I don't need to switch airbrushes and refill them and clean them. It's all good. So I just kept doing this pattern all over the tank. As you can see, just drawing lines, covering. And the key is with these camouflage patterns is, is consistency and fluidity in the sense that 
you got to keep the pattern going over the entire section that you're doing. So for example, this gun turret that I'm doing right now, not only will I do the area uh, underneath it, because as you can see what I'm doing right now, that way it's a nice continuous line and it flows between the sections of the tank. You can end them at any point if you wish, but if you do so, make sure to cover everything in between. You know, if it wraps around an object, make sure it wraps entirely around that object because that's how you pull off the camouflage on a vehicle. So right now I'm just continuing that line as you can see from the, the front of the tank and I'm continuing upwards towards the main gun. Once again, just etching out a pattern, some straight lines, some bends, and some squigglies, and then filling it out a little bit at a time. And I continue this around the tank. This first color is important, but not uh, the, if you don't like the lines ultimately, you can easily fix them once again, as I said, by starting off with the lighter of the two colors and going over later with the darker of the two colors. All right, so after a few minutes of airbrushing, we are now, look at this, we got the original camo pattern done. So this is gonna be the edging basically of it. Um, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of Ushapti Bone and do about a two to one mix of Ushapti Bone to Bane Blade Brown, and then go over the center parts of these areas, keeping the edges the Bane Blade Brown, and just reading, you know, just to reiterate the pattern. So as we said, we went over it, and that's a great thing about airbrushing, as you can see, it only took me about five minutes, and I have this thing painted to a good, you know, good amount so far. So this entire pattern is going to take about 15 minutes max to do, and then you have a Bane Blade painted up, and then you just do the, the you know, quick armor, and you're good to go. So let's keep going with a two to one mix of Shabti Bone and Bane Blade Brown. So for this next step, all I did was I took my two to one mix of Bane Blade Brown and Ushapti Bone and just applied, as you can see here, to the center parts of the camo that I did, leaving intentionally some lines on the end. And uh, when it dries, it'll be a little bit darker, so it'll blend a little bit better. What this does is it creates um, a couple points of shading between the greens and the browns, and it just lends itself to another color and it helps blend the two colors when doing the camo pattern. And it actually really makes it look a little more camouflaged, it's pretty cool. And the reason why I'm doing this second highlight is just I'm focusing on the areas that are more upwards. Um, as you can see, I'm not going to do the bottom of it, just the, t the areas that are facing forwards and upwards, just the center parts. Because that way it adds another color, it's not a, just a, a two, you know, a two color pattern scheme. Um, yeah, just it adds another color, increases the highlights, and, and just gives us more tones. Because this tank would be older and more worn out which I'll be doing uh, later on, like uh, after this tutorial, obviously I'm gonna do some weathering on it. All right, so now that we've done that step, now the next step is we're gonna take our next, we're gonna take our green, which is gonna be Castellan green, the army camo green basically, put in our airbrush and keep going. And now we're gonna clean up any edge we don't like in the original pattern, but we're gonna fill in the rest basically. That's the goal. It's gonna be majority is gonna be green and uh, we're just gonna clean up and make it a little more curvy and that's what we're gonna do. It's not gonna take much time at all. Obviously the previous step was a lot easier because you just had to go around the middle, but uh, let's keep going and get this thing camo shape. So the next step is quite easy. I'm gonna take Castell and Green, put in my airbrush. Of course, use some airbrush thinner as always. I, th I thin down all my paints today using airbrush thinner, and I'm going to paint basically the rest of the tank with Castell and Green, so this is gonna take a little while, but I'm gonna start off with the edges with the camo pattern. As you can see, I'm gonna clean them up and uh, just add a little, a couple more curves and just make them a little more bendy because I found them a little straight. So this is the great part. As I said, going with a, a darker color over a lighter color so you can easily fix the lines that you're not too happy about and create that cool camo pattern that you really want to do. And so I always start off with the edges around the previous color and then I just fill them in with the same uh, airbrush as well. So as you can see, just cleaning up the lines and then painting and filling them in like the front of the tank here. And that's it, essentially, for this, this step. Uh, it's already been pre-shaded, so you don't have to worry about that because the, the pre-shading really helps in this color. And, and just the key is to do nice, precise movements of your airbrush, cleaning up the previous ones and then filling them in. You always gotta be very careful when working with the previous lines because it's much harder than to go back over them with the Ushabti bone than, uh, to go, than it is right now. Just to keep nice clean lines with the Castell and Green. So this step took a little bit longer, but not too long. As you can see here, it's, it's very easy to work with an airbrush over these surfaces because they're nice and most of them are pretty flat. Um, the key is just, as I said, 
protect the lines and then fill in the gaps and you're good to go. So I kept doing this with the other side as well. That one pillar's a little loose, but it's okay. I'll glue it back in later. And continue around the entire tank. That's the beauty about airbrushes. They save you a lot of time on these large vehicles and create pretty nice, uh, very nice patterns, as you can see. And this isn't too complicated. This is just a simple camouflage scheme. And now that we've got the uh, camo pattern done, I'm gonna just add a little bit of Strachan green into my combination and just do a little bit of a highlight so that way it's not just flat of a color because you can see there's a bit of a dimension to the uh, the browns and now it's time to add the same dimension to the greens so let's go ahead and do that now. So now for this final step I did a two to one mix of Castellan Green to Strachan Green and just highlighted up some areas like the edges and areas that are facing upwards just build up a good gradient so each part I just focus more on the center parts of the green areas and uh, just build up a bit of a gradient to colors once again. And plus the, the dark Castellan green that we did in the first step, it really is, it lends itself to the lines of the camouflage. So it kind of looks like we just, you know, highlighted up the lines and it really accentuated them because uh, it'll, it'll, yeah, it's it almost like we did an edge lining of all these uh, camouflage areas and it actually makes itself look quite nicely. But just highlighting up the areas quickly. This step didn't take very much time because uh, I'm only highlighting the pre areas that are already painted in. The first step always takes longer than the second highlight color. Focusing on the areas that are facing upwards and outwards, not doing the bottom of the tank or anything like that. So there we go. Now we're done and we have a nice camel pattern. It's a quick, easy, simple camel pattern on a giant pain blade. Didn't take much time at all because airbrushes rule. So it looks pretty good. As you can see, it definitely blends in, has that nice camel look to it. A bit of def difference in colors because of the uh, use of the secondary colors for each one. And looks good. Quick, easy pattern. Not too hard. Gotta love airbrushes. Now the band blade's good to go. Now you can just keep on with the silvers. Uh, I'm just gonna paint the silvers, the, the symbols, and then I'll do a little bit of the weathering like I've done in the previous videos along the edge, and it's good to go. It's not a very hard color scheme because band blades aren't really hard to paint, but it's a lot of fun. So that concludes another Airbrush 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, now our band blade is good to go. I really hope you enjoyed the camo. It's not too hard to make. As you can see, it's just a simple camo pattern using four different colors. Uh, and an airbrush. The key is just to get the nice patterns and then clean it up using the darker colors and good to go. Appreciating always helps because it creates a little difference in the colors as they go. And that's it. And obviously if you appreciate, paint accordingly. Don't hit it from the same angle that you appreciate it from. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Leave comments in the comment section down below of what you want to see in future videos and I'll do my best to make sure that every suggestion happens. So thank you very much for watching. Most importantly, thank you for subscribing to Warp. You people are awesome. And uh, to like some, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.